Hello there and happy April, happy spring. I hope your life is sweet, that your days are warm and sunny, and that you're keeping yourself calm and centered these days. There's a lot happening out there. So this is the tarot reading for April. And in last month's tarot, I asked a lot of questions about the U.S. financial system, about money, um, debt, uh, the future of our financial system, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency. And this month, I had one more question, uh, financial question. And, and then I had some questions about the New World Order. And then one about Hollywood. So, as always, I am searching for insight and guidance on how to view the events happening in our world and how to respond to them. So, let's begin. The questions asked this month were, number one, what do we need to know about central bank digital currency and its impact on our lives? Question number two. What can the cards tell us about the new world order and how this would affect us? You know, there's always a chance something good may come of that. And question number three, what is the future of Hollywood as the source of our entertainment? And the cards drawn were, in answer to question number one, the Queen of Wands. Pretty powerful. Question number two, I pulled the world card and out with it fell the nine of swords. Again. And then question number three regarding Hollywood, I got the eight of wands. Very interesting. So question number one. What do we need to know about central bank digital currencies and their impact on our lives? And the card drawn here is Queen of Wands, which has a big message, big message. Can I say it again? Big message for us. The queens in a tarot deck are the most powerful cards, much more so than the kings. And queens indicate that whatever the question is, it has to do with destiny. Destiny is something we do not always have control over, yet we must face it, whether we like it or not. Destiny includes fate and the need to take action in order to create or avoid a particular fate. Queens also carry the suggestion that there are hidden forces pulling strings or pushing an agenda, which gives the entire situation regarding central bank digital currencies a tinge of the mythic struggle. So the question becomes, are CBDCs an arena we must step into, must step into? and deal with in order to avoid a fate we don't want? Queens are about taking charge of life, about mastery and self-knowledge. And the Queen of Wands has a complex message containing three questions and some advice. So the three questions ask, one, what are the inner motivations of those promoting the central bank digital currencies. Two, what is it they want? And three, can we continue to live as we do now freely and in the ways we choose to live with CBDCs, if we have CBDCs? So when we look at this card, we see a woman sitting on a throne and that throne reaches into the sky all the way to the top of the card and beyond. She's wearing a yellow flowing robe, one red shoe, and a gray cape held in place by a clasp that symbolizes Pisces. It's got the symbol of Pisces on it. Her arms are open and her legs are just slightly apart. Her hair is red 
and she wears a yellow crown, indicating the need for an intelligent approach. She is holding a wand in her right hand, signaling that we are soon facing a need to act. Wands are about action. And there's a sunflower in her left hand. There are several more sunflowers on the backrest of the throne, as well as two standing red lions. There are also lion heads carved into the two armrests. The entire throne is sitting on a gray concrete pedestal. Concrete. Is it real? Is it physical? Are CBDs real? Are they physical? Do we want to make them real? And there are mountains to her right, a desert to her left, and the sky is a light blue, very conspicuously. There is a black cat sitting in front of her. The queen sitting on the throne symbolizes the central bank digital currencies and their power. The throne symbolizes both the power of the CBDCs as well as the people behind them, the people behind the throne, which would be the people fostering or pushing the CBDCs. Since the throne reaches into the sky and the top of it cannot be seen, this tells us that there are aspects of CBDCs that are unknown or unseen. This also indicates the power CBDCs would bring to those in control of them. When it comes to assessing the power of CBDCs, that the power they would have over our lives, that throne reaching to the sky says the sky is the limit. And those in control would be unlimited. The queen has a very relaxed, upright, alert pose. And that symbolizes that those bringing the CBDCs to us are confident and they're paying attention. Their attitude is one of, we can't lose. And yet they are alert and watching. They are shepherding their baby carefully. The message to us is that we are being watched and we must pay attention as well, lest we give away our future and our freedom. The attentiveness also suggests that they are paying close attention because they wanna head off any opposition. Along with her relaxed and alert pose, the queen's open arms and legs indicate they expect little real opposition to the central bank digital currencies. This is backed up by the sunflower in her left hand. Sunflowers represent light and success in some endeavor. However, the sunflower here has no roots and thus it is not something that can grow naturally. The sunflowers painted on the backrest of the throne point to an effort to paint a rosy picture of central bank digital currencies, perhaps by touting a simpler, easier life, you know, free of cares and worries, something many people may fall for if they do not understand the risks of the situation. Sunflowers carry a warning. They warn against ignoring the dark side of things. They call for bringing all aspects of a situation into the light in order to make good decisions. So we have to ask ourselves, what is the dark side of central bank digital currency and what can we do about this? Anything? Are we expected to ignore the dark side of life under the control of CBDCs? That flowing yellow robe calls for a great deal of careful, thoughtful, intelligent consideration in this matter. 
what if they collapse the banks, taking all our money and then try to give it back to us in the form of CBDCs? Should we bow to their wishes? Can you let go of your cash without fear and resentment? The gray cape worn by the queen signifies disconnection, indifference, and an absence of awareness, which may be something that those pushing the CBDCs are counting on from us. They've wrapped themselves in this illusion that we're just not paying attention. Gray also represents the fog of deception. And this points to a deliberate attempt to wrap CBDCs in an aura of foggy perception. The Pisces clasp holding the cape in place represents the end stage of developments. And it also warns we may be too trusting and will get hurt. With the Queen of Wands indicating that CBDCs represent a critical issue in our destiny and so many of the symbols pointing to difficulties. Are there any hints in our favor? And the answer is yes. The red hair and the red shoe peeking out from under the yellow robe point to information that hints at flaws or weak spots in the CBDC situation. So we should watch for those. Watch for those flaws and weak spots. The red hair symbolizes impatience or having to move faster than you want to move. A plan that has not gone as planned is also indicated by that red hair. And the red shoe backs this up with the hint that they are having to make their moves at a most inopportune moment, putting their entire plan at risk. The red hair and shoe also indicate that they could be angry and overreact if their plan is not welcomed by those they hope will adopt it. Can you deal with the possibility of governmental anger and overreaction? What might that look like? And how would that impact you personally? There are four lions depicted on this card. Two standing red lions on the backrest and two carved into the armrests. And this symbolizes that there will be a major, repeat, need, <laughs> repeat, major need for strength and courage in handling this situation. Even one lion calls for confidence and strength. And here we have four. Lions call for confidence, strength, and the use of our power. Even though the landscape of life is offering mountains on one side and a desert of options on the other. Mountains represent problems. Desert means no options. The main warning associated with this card is to pay attention. Pay attention in ways that will leave us ready to handle major challenges. The biggest challenge that comes with this card is the entire dimension of humanity is at risk. And we will need strength and will to survive. This card demands Creative potential, even when it seems there is nothing left or one has reached the end of the road. In fact, this card symbolizes a confluence of major issues in life. A whole bunch of issues coming together at once, kind of like a, what do you call it, perfect storm. And the need to bring forth new life from what seems to be a void. What do you do when everything is gone, done, over, or taken away? The card goes even further and says, the issue at hand will affect your will to live, 
your creativity, your sexuality, survival, career, family, etc., which is just about everything. Are you prepared physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually? Are you prepared? Finally, there is that black cat. The black cat carries an important message and cats symbolize several things. One message is that if CBDCs are implemented, or maybe I should say once CBDCs are implemented, the cat will be out of the bag, so to speak. Once the cat is out of the bag, those controlling CBDC systems will not be able to hide their real intentions. This is like saying it'll be too late to close the barn door because the horse has already bolted. The warning also applies to both sides. Those pushing the CBDC system will be unable to hide the truth about their system, and we will find it is too late to stop it. The black cat also indicates that unknown powers are being used against us, which in turn calls for us to reach deep inside to find and tap the power we inherently hold as humans. The cat, especially big cats, lions, tigers, leopards, panthers, etc., big cats, um, the cat is the universal symbol of consciousness and also of many lives. This indicates that the CBD situation is a confidence game, one played in consciousness and requiring acute discernment and a steely will. This also urges us to know that once the intentions of those running the money system are clear, the consciousness of the people living in that system must figure out ways to go around or abandon it if it is restrictive, hurtful, or repressive. The nine lives of the cat tell us that there are many more lifestyles and cultural systems available than the one we have been living, and many more forms of money and finance than what we are familiar with. If the dollar dies and CBDCs are snubbed or people walk away, the black cat represents at least seven more kinds of financial systems and forms of civilization that could be implemented to suit our fancy. Keywords for this card are decisive, abrupt, self-determination, maturity, support, powerful women, tyrannical, commanding, economy, executive ambition, leadership, vitality, courage, valor, and put it into action. In closing, the question we asked was, what do the cards have to say about CBDCs and their impact on our lives? And the Queen of Wands is a card that represents a process of self-discovery. Since wands are about action, the discovery process is likely to be centered on a variety of actions as we try many different things. Queens are associated with the element of water, and wands are about fire. And thus, the queen of wands sits on the throne of fire and transformation that's driven by emotion and sudden and complete change. The advice from the cat is let yourself out of the bag. Dare to live your own way with enthusiasm. Question number two. What can the cards tell us about the new world order and how this would affect us? 
And well, you know, I shouldn't have been surprised when I drew the world card because I was, after all, asking about the new world order. However, the card that fell out with this was the Nine of Swords. This is the same card drawn in January when I asked about changes we would have to make in the American views of sex. Sex involves not only lovemaking, but gender issues, identity issues, religion issues, and social roles. Now the Nine of Swords is back in response to how would the New World Order affect us? As you can see from the cards drawn, we have big issues to deal with, big things to think about and grasp at deep levels, and lots to prepare for, lots. The world card symbolizes the need to build or put together a new world. It's kind of obvious, isn't it? <laughs> It symbolizes the last step in the completion of a process of great inner work. Is this the great inner work of the cabal or is it the inner work of humanity? Is it our new world or their new world order? This card represents personal work deep personal work that involves coming to grips with all of the polarities, the fears, the opposing ideas, biases, and conflicts within and around us and between and among us all. It is the kind of work required in order to build a new world that works better than the one we have. Again, whose new world will it be? ours or someone else's. When you look at the world card, you see a mostly naked woman in the center of the card. A purple colored shawl kind of winds around her, spirals around her, and she holds a wand in each hand. Around her is a very large green wreath with a red ribbon around it at the top and at the bottom. The red ribbon is in the shape of an infinity symbol. And the background of the card is bright blue. In each corner of the card, there's a different figure symbolizing variously the four elements of wind, water, fire, and earth. The four evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And the four horsemen of the apocalypse symbolizing war, conquest, famine, and death. This card is often seen as the end of the road, the end of time, or the end of the hero's journey that was begun with the very first step in the tarot card deck. It's uh, card number zero, the fool. By the time we reach the end of the road, we should have reached the wisdom of the world. We, we've been through a lot. We've learned a lot. And we should be ready to use that wisdom as needed to shape the world we want. The woman in the center of the card symbolizes Mother Earth and the security she offers in knowing how to survive. If you recall, the Fool card starts out with one hand indicating that he's all about himself. All his action is for him. He's trying to make a life for himself. However, the woman here has two wands, one for herself and one for others, because along the way, we discover that we need one another. And if the new world order is imposed, we are really going to need one another. The purple shawl that spirals around the woman represents the spiral of evolution, DNA, and personal development. Purple also symbolizes higher consciousness and spirituality. It indicates waking up to reality 
and letting go of illusions. Ask yourself, does the new world order appear to be based on higher consciousness and spirituality? Will the new world order lead to higher dimensional living? The large green wreath has several meanings. It symbolizes the fact that we are encircled and supported by the natural world of green, green plants and nature. This is where our security is found. This is where our true spirituality can unfold. This is true even in the higher dimensional systems where you are still dealing with plants, some animals, and the elements. The wreath serves as a boundary, bringing certain limits to our existence. Wreaths are also hung during holiday celebrations and on graves when life is over. The wreath here indicates that we are coming to the end of a world or a way of life, and the decisions and choices we make will result in either celebration or the grief that comes with the grave. What are the limitations of the new world order and do they represent your ideal life? Have you thought about this? What kind of nature would you want to live with in a new world of your own design? At the top and the bottom of the wreath, there's a small red ribbon that's wrapped around it. And it's a reminder of the continuity of life. It's in an infinity uh, kind of shape. And so it, it symbolizes the continuity of life while warning against getting into a rut or a pattern that catches you in a loop going nowhere, going from one extreme to the other, to the other and back again, etc. It's a reminder to look around, see what's going on around you, and to mature in your responses to what is happening. The figures in the corner symbolizing the four elements tell us to get out there and fully live in harmony with every element of yourself. As you throw off petty restrictions, and immature perceptions. The four evangelists, they wrote the gospels. They symbolize good news because the gospel means good news. Look for the good news, the good side of what is possible and how you can enjoy and nurture that. And then there are the four horsemen of the apocalypse symbolizing the events that often take place at the end of one world and the start of another, war, conquest, famine, and death. Are you prepared to deal with these things? Have you instituted a new way of living that will allow you to survive? This card represents the great need to understand that the end of a world requires a dual approach. It needs celebration coming from an eye on the good news of the future and a readiness to deal with the difficulties of the change. Dual approach. The main message of this card is focused on exploring and building new worlds exploring and building new worlds. This tells us to use inner vision and dreams and to rely on our natural instincts to see what needs to be rebuilt or redesigned. The predictive side of this card points to a minimum of an entire year and usually an entire decade of making the world a better place while questioning the origins and the motives of those running the current world. And some people will say it represents three cycles, 21 years, a cycle of seven years. It's a lot of change. It's a lot of um, 
uproar, chaos possible. Keep your eye on that new world. Uh, it warns that for at least the year following when you draw this card, there will be great resistance to shoulds, limitations, and restrictions. It symbolizes the building of new worlds both internally and externally, and it indicates that we will soon see life through a completely new and different set of lenses. Keywords for the world are final destination, limitations, deliverance, repetition, ruts, inconsistencies, personal contribution, opportunity, balance, immaturity, evolution, starting over, opposition, and intense inner work. So this is the card of global awareness, community building, and universal understanding, all of which are necessary if we're going to deal with the second card that came out when I pulled the world card. That second card was the nine of swords. When a second card falls out with a card drawn, it deeply modifies and clarifies the first card. Our question about the new world order and how it would affect us does not have a good answer in the Nine of Swords. Regardless of what we expect, demand, hope for, worry about, or prepare for, this card signals great difficulty. The base meaning of this card is shock. An illuminating awakening to a nightmarish situation. When you look at the card, you see a figure who has awakened in the middle of the night from a nightmare and is covering his face in his hands. The entire background of the card is black. And there are nine swords hanging above him. The figure is wearing a white nightgown, which symbolizes naivete and sometimes the beginning of something new. There's a patchwork quilt with red roses on some of the patches and the signs of the zodiac on the alternate patches. The bed shows the twins of Gemini carved into the side of it. Swords is the suit of thoughts and thinking. This card is about being startled awake by a whole array of information, knowledge, and thoughts that one has not known, has tried to deny, or has not taken seriously, nor taken the necessary action to deal with. In essence, it points to a situation whose outlook is dark, but that must be dealt with. No running away. The black wall represents many shadows and unknowns. And it warns that information has been suppressed or ignored. The hands in front of the face show an attempt to block out thoughts and awarenesses of something a reluctance to face something. Since our question was, how would the new world order affect us? The Nine of Swords tells us that we may not be able to get our minds around the reality of how it would affect us until it is too late and we wake up to the situation that we have stepped into. It says we may hold all sorts of naive or immature ideas about this until we're actually in the new world order. And only then will we realize what we have gotten into. If we were thinking, we could just simply adjust, could adapt, could make things work by coming together in small communities. The shock may be that we cannot pull it off. Maybe it would be that there are too many restrictions in place, too many things not working, 
we are too hungry and lacking in energy or dealing with sick family members or unable to travel anywhere because of infrastructure damage or threatening military. Whatever it is, the Gemini twins on the side of the bed symbolize being unprepared to see or contemplate what we are suddenly faced with. They indicate arguing with oneself, going back and forth between the old world and the new world while trying to learn and handle the new situation. The roses on the quilt symbolize the need to stay with your heart and take action accordingly. The signs of the zodiac represent coming to the end of a cycle that has taught us a lot. Is the end of the cycle a euphemistic way of saying the end of the old world, the world we once knew and were quite comfortable in? The swords hanging in the background represent a number of things. They are arranged like the bars of a prison. This symbolizes that we are lost in a prison of our own making, possibly from refusing to admit what was happening. We often tell ourselves that that could never, that could never happen here. That prison could also be the new and changing situation we would find ourselves in if the new world order were in place. The black wall in the background indicates the entire, I mean, complete mental and emotional landscape is involved here. And the swords on the wall represent an entire pattern that we have been immersed in without wanting to see it. If we take the first question in this tarot, question number one, so we're backing up just a little bit, which asks about CBDCs, and we pair it with our second question, which asks about the new world order, and then we add information from the last three tarot readings Information such as the shock of learning something nightmarish about sexual activity in America that we covered in January and changes in our perception of religion stemming from the mistranslations in the Bible and then financial upsets revealed last month. The cards indicate changes coming on a scale that we have not dealt with previously. If there are other hidden things to add that we have not dug into, we stand the chance of entering into a state of shock and becoming incoherent. Back to the present and the Nine of Swords. The good news with this card is that a completely new network of insights and new landscape of thinking is going to come to the foreground. Might this be helpful in building a new world? Part of the message of this card is that uh, we must take the time to survey the whole landscape of life that we are dealing with and think about giving ourselves permission to get outside the box and do what we have to do. The advice of the Nine of Swords card, especially when combined with the World card, is to take time to stop, look, and listen to the world around you. It urges us to daydream a little, chat with others about what they see happening, inquire about their thoughts, their ideas of how to handle different situations, and tuck all of this into your back pocket in case you need to take some action of your own. The Nine of Swords card says that there will be a steady flow of awarenesses that will need to be processed and integrated and that we should not try to gloss over the situations coming toward us. A mature person takes himself or herself seriously. 
The Nine of Swords is known as the Lord of Cruelty and Despair. Keywords for this card are primitive instincts, psychopathy, suffering, climax, intensity, force, celibacy, cult, devotion, shame, malice, and fanaticism. It is associated with a sign of Gemini, a mutable sign, which means that an entire season is coming to an end and a new season of life is beginning. That's what mutable means. The end of one season, the beginning of another. So, question number three. What is the future of Hollywood and the source of our entertainment? And the card drawn in response to this question was the Eight of Wands. This is one of the few cards in the entire tarot deck that does not have any people on it. When you look at this card, there are eight wands that seem to be flying through the air. There's a river in the background. And on the other side of the river, there's a house uh, or maybe a castle. The landscape is green. The sky is light blue. And that's it. The card is very simple. This is a very interesting card to come up with regarding Hollywood because there are no people on the card. Because there are no people on the card, it indicates that there may come a time when Hollywood disappears and all those people we adored are nowhere to be seen. It can also indicate that the actors and actresses who populate Hollywood are discovered to be not real in some way, or that the entire business of Hollywood is about to change dramatically. Since we've had several Hollywood actors come out and talk about the culture of rape, corruption, child sex, and adrenochrome use in Hollywood, this card could indicate some type of response that changes everything for those in the movie business. The main message of this card is swift action. It is the card of fasten your seatbelts because we're taking off and there are some intense energies involved. The fact that there are no people on this card suggests that the people of Hollywood may disappear or go underground or simply not be what they once were. This is the card of leaving ego behind and getting involved in something that makes a powerful statement or becomes a powerful movement. Does this hint that the people of Hollywood know there's something awful going on in their community and they let go of enough ego to form another kind of entertainment base that replaces Hollywood? This card tells us that a series of swift events will culminate in big changes in the way we get our entertainment. It also symbolizes the possibility of a coordinated response to Hollywood on the part of the masses, the people who generally make up the audience for Hollywood. Wands are all about action. And this card says, get out of the way. Here we come. When you look at the card, you see that the wands are all in alignment with one another. And this points to a sudden, powerful alignment among who? Is it us? Is it the people? Is it the government taking action of some kind? Is it the business world? Is it the people of Hollywood itself? We don't know yet. The river symbolizes going with the flow of life. 
And the house or castle on the other side of the river symbolizes not only the hearts of people, because home is where the heart is, but also the realization of the potential of what can happen when people come into alignment. Would they align with or against Hollywood? Is some organization or group aligning with one another and taking action to say no thank you to Hollywood? The green landscape represents something new happening as well as naivete due to lack of experience. And the blue sky calls for clarity, the use of intuition, and the need, need, big need to be aware at all times. What is it we need to be aware of? Was Hollywood just a base for propaganda built into every movie? The Eight of Wands is known as the Lord of Swiftness, and it indicates changes on many levels, high-velocity energy, and quick communications. Boom, boom, boom. Keywords for the Eight of Wands are ambition, life energy, rigid, sharply defined, news, putting in order, power, risk, expansion, decisive, blunt speech, remorse, making way for the new, hasty communication, speed, urgency, coordinated effort, zeal, and internal agitation. So that's it for our three questions. So let's sum up here. Quick summary of all of our questions. Question number one, what can the cards tell us about central bank digital currencies and their impact on our lives? And the card drawn here was the Queen of Wands. A card that tells us that central bank digital currencies are tied up with and will greatly affect our destiny. Queens are about taking charge of life. They're about mastery and about self-knowledge. What do you want? Self-knowledge. Know thyself. We are being asked, do we want to be master of our own fate or not? Wands are about the need for action, and this card calls for a great deal of careful thoughtful, intelligent action that considers the light and dark sides of a situation. What will we have if we lose all our money? What if we have worked and saved all of our lives to create pensions for retirement in a system that was working just fine, but is suddenly not working anymore? What will we become if we choose to let others control our lives? The Queen of Wands represents a situation in which everything is at stake. Everything is at stake. But with sunflowers in hand, we are prompted to recognize what's really at stake is not ours to lose. If we choose wisely and well, we will have nothing to lose except a corrupt system based on lies, deceit, fraud, torture, and trafficking. We have everything to gain, especially the freedom to create new lives for all of us. Question number two, what can the cards tell us about the new world order and how this would affect us? And there were two cards here. The first one being the world card. And the second one, which fell out with the world card, was the nine of swords. A card we've seen a couple of times in the past year. As should be obvious, the world card symbolizes the need to build or put together a new world, a new life for ourselves. And this can really only be achieved by cleaning out the old consciousness. For it is consciousness 
that gets projected and expressed by each of us slowly and steadily shaping the amazing world around us. The world card symbolizes Mother Earth and the security she offers, pointing to a needed reconnection that will support us as we rebuild. The Nine of Swords represents the sudden shock that accompanies a deeply threatening change such as war, the loss of your job, empty grocery stores, or the loss of your house. It can also symbolize a sudden awakening to a nightmarish situation that you previously ignored, poo-pooed as conspiracy theory, or believed it would somehow correct itself. And question number three, what is the future of Hollywood and our source of entertainment? And the card drawn here was the very mysterious Eight of Wands, a card with no people on it and the symbol of swift changes coming in the form of an alignment of many factors, perhaps a perfect storm of energies. This could be changes involving the minds and hearts of the general population, changes in the business model used in Hollywood, changes in the technology, the culture itself, the financial aspects, or even the political situation in the U.S. Regardless, this is the card of fasten your seatbelts because we're taking off and there are some really intense energies involved. It suggests that the entire Hollywood myth may collapse or at least change dramatically and that we may end up getting our entertainment in a whole new way. This card, when paired with the Queen of Wands, the World card, the Nine of Swords, points to a population finally being roused into action, waking up and taking steps to make coordinated changes. So that's it for this month. I hope you found some nuggets in there to add to your stores of wisdom Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you in the month of May. Or maybe I'll see some of you in the Intuition One class next weekend, April 5, 6, and 7. Have a wonderful April. <laughs>